Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be looking at what I got from Gen Con 2023. Now I know it's a little bit late, it's honestly not even August anymore, but uh, you know, I've been really, really, really busy in August and I've got a lot of cool content coming out and the things that I did in August, I was able to go to RootCon, which I have a video coming for that. And while I was actually at Gen Con, I was working um, for Ravensburger, putting together three videos that were basically gonna be like an experience video, showing some B-roll of the first ever Villainous tournament, as well as getting some interviews. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to kind of upload all of that stuff for you guys, but what exactly did I actually end up getting? I, I came into Gen Con basically thinking that I only wanted a few certain games, and um, I actually ended up getting pretty much all the games that I wanted to get out of it. So, starting off with the first one, this was one that I didn't actually expect to get, but this is uh, Cosmoctopus. I ended up going to a Lucky Duck event with uh, Tim and uh, Bonzinator. We walked in and they were just giving out this game. And uh, that night, me and Tim actually played this game. And so I can say that it's, it's really fun. It's very uh, easy to get into. I think this will be a really good game that I can introduce uh, some people to the hobby because it's got uh, a lot of cute factor. Uh, the artwork's really good and just like the board and design is really, really well done. Um, uh, the main designer of this was Henry Audubon, uh, and he does uh, really good games. You might know him from like Parks. So really, really good designer, and game is fun. Um, I really, really like the artwork too, but that's Cosmoctopus, game I didn't expect to get, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> So one of the games that was actually on my list to get was, uh, there were two games from Devere that I really wanted. Um, Devere is the company that does uh, Bitoku, they do Red Cathedral. Uh, a lot of games that I really enjoy come from Devere. And there were two games that I wanted from them. And while we were actually like in Gen Con, there was a couple times where I would look at the line and I'd be like, nah, I'm, I'm good, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. But I was walking around and me and Jeff from Foster the Meeple uh, looked in the line and it was actually really, really slim at one point. We jumped in the line and were able to get the stuff that we wanted. So the first one was Three Ring Circus. Now this is a small box, but I will say that it's it's pretty hefty. Um, and this game I actually didn't know much about except for the fact that um, it was by Devere, it was kind of a Euro looking game, and I knew that it had kind of a crazy tableau building mechanism, which I think looked really interesting. When I was actually at the table, I ended up seeing that uh, there was these cool like giant pieces of uh, cardboard that you could put to cover up the board that make the board look really pretty even if you're going to lower power like player counts. So like cuts off the board with like a giant tile and I thought that was really, really nice. Um, but I'll just read like the back basically of it just to kind of give you an idea of the theme. Um, the circus arrives in town and the whole place is bursting with excitement and joy. Jugglers, magicians, and feral beasts will capture the attention and imagination of all who attend the show. But will it be impressive enough for the big circus company to notice your little show, put together the best show in the country, and try to merge your business with the largest circus operator in the world? And I think they're talking about, um, oh, what's, what's their name? biggest circus operator in the world there was that movie about it wait what was there what was that name what pt barnum that's the name pt barnum so i know that gosh that took me forever you guys have no idea how long that cut actually was between there but pt barnum i know will actually be moving around the board and i believe that he actually determines where uh scoring happens and you're just trying to move your kind of traveling band that you're going to be adding to um, around the board and trying to score as well. It looks interesting. The artwork is magnificent. I'm really, really excited to try this one. I have not played it yet, but um, hopefully you guys will hear reports once I played it. And then the other game from Devere that I was very excited to look into was called Jerusalem, which um, this one mostly uh, got me intrigued with it by its actual theming because I don't feel like there's like a lot of good games that are, I guess, in a uh, 
biblical theme, I guess, per se. So this is about you're trying to get your followers. So everybody's going to be controlling followers. And you're actually trying to get your followers um, as close to Jesus as possible during the Last Supper. Over the course of the game, players are going to be placing the prophets um, around the table, and those determine how many points um, that players will get for basically being behind them. And it's kind of cool because there's kind of I guess it's probably pretty hard to see, but there's kind of this inner room right here where it shows the Last Supper and Jesus is in the center. And you're trying to just kind of play this game of uh, around the around the table, trying to get your pieces as close as possible to Jesus to get the best score. And I do like the mechanic of, you know, if you have a piece right behind Jesus, you'd, you know, you'd get seven points. If you have a piece right behind that piece, you'd get six, then five, then four, and so on along each line with the prophets and Jesus. It's a very, very cool little mechanism. But on top of that, you are kind of going to be playing cards down and trying to match up these symbols in order to determine which actions you can actually take around the board, um, where you can place your workers so that you can collect more resources, more of the bread, the fish, and the, the uh, stones. So I actually was able to play this game with Kate and we really enjoyed our first play of it. We want to play it more. Um, I think it's a really, really cool um, theme and it really blends well with those mechanics. It's definitely kind of a little bit on the heavier side. Um, I think that it is an easy game once you get it, but it does kind of seem a lot like there's like a lot of rules when you're kind of learning the game. It kind of seems a little bit more complex, but I think once you like play one round of it, um, you really start to, it, it clicks really, really quickly. Um, really, really cool game. I've already been able to play it and I've already enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So that's Jerusalem, or you could call it Jerusalem, um, or you could call it Jerusalem. So there's a, there's a lot of different ways, but really, really excited about this. And then my wife uh, would have literally been so sad if I was not able to pick this up at Gen Con. Um, as you know, her favorite game is Everdell, and I love Everdell as well. So I was actually able to pick up Farshore, which is a game in the world of Everdell. And it's basically like, I, I almost want to say it's like Everdell, like a little bit elevated base Everdell, because this really is um, essentially the same game that the first Everdell was. There are some new mechanics. There's some cleaning up. It's a lot easier to kind of cycle the cards in the center. And one of the best parts is that those eight cards that are in the center right here. Um, if you have duplicates of them come out, they actually just go on top. So there's always going to be eight different cards on the board, which I absolutely love. That's something that the original game really needed. So this kind of feels like an updated version of that base game. It has a lot of quality of life improvements that just kind of are built right in. It doesn't feel much different than Everdell though. So if you're not a hardcore fan of Everdell, this might be something that if you already have Everdell, you might want to pass up. But for me and my wife, this was a must buy. We had to get this. We love the artwork, um, which is actually not by Andrew Bosley, but um, the artist is um, Jackie Davis, and they do an amazing job almost replicating that Andrew Bosley art style, but also adding their own spin, and I think this game is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, we were able to play it, and we really, really enjoy it. What's the nicest thing for me about this um, is that We've got the giant collector's edition of Everdell, which is really, really hard to like haul around and play with people. But this is now kind of that copy of um, kind of like that copy of Everdell that we can just bring around and uh, show people the game. So I'm really, really excited about Farshore. I was even able to get both designers to sign the inside of the cover, which very, very excited about. But that is far shore. Now, the last game that I was able to pick up from Gen Con was one that I was actually kind of worried that I wasn't going to be able to get because I was kind of running out of time and the line was always long and I just didn't know if I was going to be able to pick it up. Also, it is the biggest game that I got at Gen Con, but that is going to be Age of Innovation. Uh, this is this is a new Terra Mystica game or a game. Yeah, a new Terra Mystica game. Um, and if you don't know, I am a huge fan of Gaia Project. Um, I, I liked Terra Mystica. This seems like it takes kind of ideas from both of those types of games and really kind of elevates uh, where those games kind of left off. So this is something that I am so excited about. The biggest thing that I'm excited about it is the fact that you take a faction mat and then you take um, the land 
color, and those each have different abilities, and you combine them. So in the beginning of a game, if you're playing with drafting, you basically are drafting combinations. So you might be the moles that are forest, so like the forest moles, um, or uh, for example, you know, you might be the swamp um, witches. So there's there's all these different combinations, and they each have like two different abilities to kind of combine, which I think is really, really cool. And if you don't know what uh, Terra Mystica is, it's kind of hard to explain in a small amount, but essentially it is a huge Euro game um, that takes a lot of calculating and a lot of strategy in order to be good at, and it really rewards playing the game multiple times in order to be good at the game. So I am so excited to actually try Age of Innovation and cool story behind this is I didn't think I was gonna get it. I was running out of time. I was working um, at Ravensburger and uh, Tim actually bought it for me. Uh, so it was super, super nice of him. Um, didn't didn't even let me pay him back. Just so, so nice. And so um, thank you so much, Tim, for getting me this copy. And I'm just so, so excited to play it. Um, but yeah, that was the last game that I got at Gen Con. But now I'm going to move on to kind of some of the smaller things that I was able to get uh, at the convention. I'll start with kind of some of this, the really small stuff. Um, I was able to get these two pins. Um, let me show, let's see if it shows there. But yeah, I was able to get this Maleficent Lorcana pin. If you can see it there, pretty cool. And then I was able to get um, this Mickey Mouse Lorcana pin, also really, really cool. Um, I was able to get one Lorcana deck. I was able to actually get the Ruby Emerald deck, which is the Aladdin Cruella deck. Um, and it's it's in a case right now, but I was able to get that and I was so excited. Uh, I was finally able to see the Lorcana cards and actually be able to look at them and, and stuff. So it was really, really cool. Um, and since, by the way, I've been able to get um, all the starter decks and I've been able to get you know, some more Lorcana stuff, and I'm, I'm trying to get more and more, but me and Kate have played it, we enjoy it, we want to do content on it, so definitely let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing down below, because I know that Kate is really excited about it, and so that might be something that we could do together on the channel, maybe we could do like unboxings or matches or something like that, but if you don't know what Lorcana is, um, I'm surprised because it's it's very popping right now, but essentially uh, it is a Disney uh, TCG, a, a Disney collectible card game that is kind of going to be jumping up there in the ranks of Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Flesh and Blood, and Magic the Gathering, and it is uh, really, really easy to get into from what I've seen, um, but has a really, really nice start in this first chapter, and I'm excited to play more of it. I guess this is kind of considered a game, so technically this would be the last, last game that I'm showing off um, in my haul. But yeah, that's the like little bits. Oh, I was also able to get the Goofy, no, sorry, the Mickey Mouse uh, Gen Con promo card. So super excited about that. Um, okay, so I did get some other things and I've got them in a DeVere bag here. So let's see. First up is a shirt that I was so excited to uh, get. Um, but it basically says, I don't feel so lucky on this side. Uh, and then on the back side it says dinner is served. And I just think this back print is so cool. I love that kind of 1920s, uh, art style. It's some of my favorite art ever. I've got this game backed on Kickstarter. Uh, and so, uh, oh, Townsfolk Tussle is the game by Panic Roll. So I was able to get this shirt because I just thought it was so flipping cool. Um, I've been wearing it in absolute crap ton already. So, so excited to be able to kind of get the game from Kickstarter. But at least for now, I was able to support them by buying a shirt. I just, I thought the shirt was so freaking cool. All right, so these ones are really, really cute. I saw that they were actually selling at the Everdell area stuffies of the Everdell characters, which is freaking awesome. Never expected this to happen. So I got um, the adorable little fox ranger and the uh, mouse princess, and I let Kate kind of choose which ones she wanted. So uh, I love them. I think they're so darn cute. Um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of kind of like board game stuffies. Like I've got all the root ones and I'll probably get all the, all of these ones as well at some point, but I was only able to get two there so far, but I think they're so adorable and I really, really enjoy them. 
And there's only one more thing in here, which is going to be something that I was so happy to get because I actually got it for free when I went to the IV Studios booth. Um, so thank you so much, Austin. That was really, really nice of you. Um, but I really wanted the play mat for Mythic Mischief. Um, Gosh, yeah, this, I love Mythic Mischief. It's my favorite of their games. And so uh, I really wanted to get the play mat and I just walked up, say hi to Austin. And Austin just gave it to me for free. He's so nice. So um, thank you again. I really appreciate that. But also speaking of Mythic Mischief, I am going to be covering Mythic Mischief too. So be looking out for that video. It should be coming. And I'm really, really excited to kind of share more of my love of Mythic Mischief with you guys because I still think it is an absolute uh, banger of a game. So that is everything that I was able to get from Gen Con. It was such a fun time. Um, I just had such a blast. And I think probably the best thing that I was able to legitimately gain from the con was not the board games. It wasn't the stuffies. It wasn't anything that I was able to get. None of the free product. It was the fact that I was just able to spend time with my friends, like special shout out to uh, Tim, to Jeff and Jamie from Foster the Meeple, to Jenna. It was amazing running into Alex Radcliffe and Meg. Um, it was amazing to meet Devin from Devin's Talks Tabletop. It was amazing to see Max and Doolin from Table Knots. I mean, I... Oh, and I was able to meet Josh from Table Knots as well. Like there was so many people that I was able to talk to, spend time with, and that is really the biggest reason why these cons are so special. So thank you to everyone. I probably missed talking or mentioning people, but I just, I love this industry. I love being able to spend time with people. And I hope you guys enjoyed this haul that I had for you today. But until next time, that is it for the video. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.